Hi, this is Mike from Ecom Crew, and over at Ecom Crew, we have something called Ecom Crew Premium, where Dave and I hold a monthly Q&A webinar. After seeing a few of the same questions appear over and over again, we thought we should make a video to help address the 10 biggest problems that come up for Amazon sellers. Whether you're a first-time seller on Amazon or a seasoned pro, knowing these answers will hopefully help you set up to be more aware of how to deal with these problems in the future. The first question that we see frequently is, what is Amazon arbitrage? In short, Amazon arbitrage is the process of buying discounted or discontinued products and reselling them for a profit on Amazon. For example, you can buy a product for $5 and then sell it on Amazon for $20. You must list it under the product on Amazon that's the same one that you bought and you basically just earn the difference. That's arbitrage. Amazon arbitrage has excellent advantages. You don't have to create a brand new product or brand. You don't need to invest in large quantities of inventory like you do with private labeling. And you don't need to do any affiliate marketing. You don't need to deal with suppliers going and doing drop shipping for you on your behalf and having products be late or missing or any of those things. And all of these advantages add up to something that might have piqued your, in uh, your interest. So if you want to find out more about Amazon Arbitrage and how to get started, we'll leave a link below in the description about an entire article that explains specifically how you can do Amazon Arbitrage and what you can earn from it. The second question that comes up quite often, uh, especially for those that don't have an extensive email list or their own audience, is social media and what that is and what you should do about it. So why should I work with influencers and how do I get started, you might be asking yourself. You should be working with influencers because they're huge traffic drivers and they're huge drivers of revenue. Most people utilize influencers to get them talking about their products, get other people talking about their products. Getting influencers to share pictures and videos of your products is a fantastic way to bolster your social proof for your brand. And usually influencers are willing to work basically for free, uh, for free product and a commission in most cases. Sometimes they're just happy to receive free products and have content to make for their own channels. This depends on the influencer, of course, and the popularity of their channel, or how many followers they might have. When looking for an influencer, try finding a niche target and go after those specific influencers. Because if you're not focused on the right target, then you're not going to get conversions for your product. One of the key points to keep in mind is to understand from their point of view what motivates them and what they want. Okay. Our third question revolves around one of the many programs that Amazon has and not many people may be aware of. So what is the NARF program and why should I sign up for it? Amazon North American Remote Fulfillment Beta, <laughs> or NARF, will make it easier for sellers on Amazon's US marketplace and also be able to sell in Canada and Mexico. NARF allows sellers to display their inventory stored in US FBA warehouses on Amazon's Canada and Mexican marketplaces without having to ship any of their inventory to either Canada or Mexico. Amazon will make this possible by using a single global SKU for your product. So your product will now only need one FN SKU. This also means that you only need to create one listing. To register for NARF, we've included a link below where you can register for the program. Another program that you should be aware of is Amazon Global Logistics. And it's our fourth question on the list. So what is Amazon Global Logistics? AGL for short. And how do you enroll? Amazon Global Logistics or AGL is Amazon's freight forwarding service. They offer air and ocean shipping services from China to the United States, UK, Germany, France, Italy, and Spain. The program has actually been around for years, but it isn't promoted by Amazon very regularly. Amazon has even updated their interface on Seller Central to make it easier for creating shipments using this service. Basically, you can now book a shipment using this service from directly within Seller Central. AGL is about 20 to 30% more expensive than most freight forwarders, but it has two major advantages that will make up for this. First, you get to ship into a single warehouse and your shipments get checked in the stock much quicker than with your own freight forwarder. 
For standard size items, it takes about 14 days from arriving at the port in China to being received into FBA inventory. In Ecom Crew Premium, we share ways for our sellers to get registered for AGL. So if you're interested, go to ecomcrew.com slash premium and sign up. We'd love to have you. Besides literally cloning ourselves, uh, hiring in the Philippines is a really great way to get great labor at a fair price. You can hire full-time assistants with good English and great internet skills for between $500 and $1,000 a month. The question that we receive often is how do you hire someone in the Philippines? So number one, you're going to want to post a job ad and review the applications. Publish a job ad on sites like Upwork, but also a really cool site called onlinejobs.ph. You need to include instructions at the bottom of the ad for the applicant with something like put the word potato in the subject line when replying. This way you make sure the applicants actually read your whole ad and they're gonna be more competent when they actually get hired. Eliminate applicants who don't fit your required skill set and those who don't follow your instructions. You can cut out 80 to 90% of people that way. The next thing you wanna do is a screening test. They'll conduct a screening test that asks two things. The first is a basic data question, like where the applicant is located, their start date if hired, and what their expected salary is. The second is a skills questionnaire, like what is their internet speed, and what is their typing speed, and what is their English proficiency skills. Step three is the first interview, what you'll do via chat. You're gonna to wanna to pick your top three candidates who pass through to this point. Second, you're gonna to wanna to do a video call. This is after the chat call. You're gonna to wanna to watch out for candidates who may have lied or exaggerated on their resumes, and other red flags. It's a lot easier to do this via video. Also, be on the lookout for candidates who are a best fit for your company culturally. That really probably is the most important thing there. The last thing is a contract signing. You're going to want to get them to sign something that uh, makes sure that they're not going to divulge company information to other people and things like that. All right, if you're on Amazon, you probably heard of or experienced your listings being hijacked. It's one of the biggest fears that new and even experienced sellers like myself have when selling on Amazon. So the question is, how do you protect yourself from hijackers? Well, one tactic is to put your logo on your product and your packaging. This makes it a lot more difficult for someone who wants to copy your products. Another tactic is to use an Amazon FN SKU and not a UPC barcode. Using an FN SKU will identify you as the seller and makes it harder for someone to list products on your listing. Another form of protection against hijackers is to use Amazon listing alerts. Get a service that monitors your listings like SentryKit or Helium 10. You can also register your Amazon under brand registry with a trademark. Owning your trademark will give you more rights under the law. This will also allow you to join Amazon brand registry, which will give you even more protections. Now, there's also another program called Amazon Transparency that will provide sellers with fancy unique barcodes that will make it way more difficult for hijackers to hijack your listing and duplicate your products. Amazon Project Zero is another program where sellers will receive unique codes for every unit of manufacturer, but it's currently an invite-only program. Amazon brand gating can help you by putting a gate around a specific ASIN that you'd like to protect, but you must show proof of constant counterfeit activity. Let's say that a family member wants to buy one of your products. What type of URL should you use if you're going to send them your Amazon listing? To non-sellers, this might sound like a simple or even innocent question, but there's actually tons of controversy around this question and various shades of white hat, gray hat, and black hat answers. There are different options out there. You can send people directly to your Amazon listing without any other parameters. This is what we choose to do for the most part. You can also send people to your Shopify store and not directly to your listing. On your own Shopify store, you can add a buy from Amazon button and make it easy for people to buy on Amazon. Or you can use affiliate links or Amazon attribution links. One of the most repeated questions we get is about opening a second Amazon account. Specifically, when should you open a second Amazon account? Around April of 2020, Amazon drastically changed their policies regarding multiple accounts, allowing sellers with legitimate business reasons to open multiple accounts without needing Amazon's approval ahead of time. However, we still recommend 
that you open a Seller Central case and ask Amazon or at least let them know what you're going to do to ensure it covers your bases and to avoid any sort of permanent suspension issues in the future. So, when should you and when is it appropriate to open the second account? The official answer should be when you have two different businesses that are not sharing any entities, brands, or products. The unofficial answer is that once you surpass a million dollars in sales, you should probably start thinking about opening a second account for your own protection. Setting up a brand new store on Amazon is a very good way to start increasing traffic, sales, and generally making your brand stand out. It makes it easier if you're planning to sell a brand and it also helps you keep selling without having to build up seller history from scratch. However, there are downsides. Maintaining multiple accounts can be a pain in the rear end, plus your costs will be doubled. It'll increase your bookkeeping work and overall maintenance. Plus, you need a separate bank account, separate emails, separate credit cards, separate tax returns, etc., etc. All right, we're getting near the end and taking second place on our most asked question list is this one. When should you group products in a family and when should you do standalone products? So when to do variations, when not to do variations. The answer to this may vary on where you are in your e-commerce journey and the particular types of product variations you might have. When you have a product with different colors or sizes, you want to make it as easy as possible for customers to purchase the correct size because it can ultimately hurt your sales otherwise. As for variations in colors, I've spoken about this before uh, with a personal experience about how when I went down to only one color out of a variation of 13, our sales actually skyrocketed because it led to the conversion rate on the product to be significantly higher and it gave people less decision fatigue. So over the next couple of months, our sales really ramped up by going down to fewer colors. Now, if the other products have their own standalone keyword volume, you should separate these two products completely. You can also decide to launch a variation on a successful product to quote unquote, ride the coattails of the original product's success. Eventually, when you get a hundred reviews, it's a good time to separate back to a standalone listing. All right. It's time for the most asked question that we get from Ecom Crew Premium. Are you ready? If you decide to make a content site, should that be on a standalone domain or should you have it on your e-commerce website? So experience shows us that in most cases, it's better to have the blog separate from the online store. And this is for a couple of reasons. First, there's an SEO benefit to having your own domain for your blog content. This compartmentalizes your content and it looks more professional and secure. You can also reach the same target audience through two different but complementary channels. Those looking for information relating to your niche and those looking to buy a product. So they're kind of in two different buying phases. It's also beneficial for usability, navigation, and for the user. But the downside is a significantly more time and effort to maintain. So you still gotta kind of pick between the nuances of having it separated or not. So for instance, for our tactical brand, we have tactical.com and then we have a separate e-commerce website for, uh, for buying products. But for Colorit, we had it combined all on one blog on colorit.com. The same thing goes for ice wraps. For ice wraps.com, we have our products and our blogging content all together. So again, it's just, it's nuanced depending on what you wanna do. Beware of the overhead of having things separated. All right, that's it. Those are the 10 biggest questions that we've been asked over and over again during our Q&A sessions in Ecom Crew Premium. And we hope these answers will make your e-commerce journey just a little bit easier. Don't forget to like this video if you've learned something new and subscribe for more e-commerce content down below. All right, until the next one, happy selling. We'll talk to you soon.